Are you ready for this? We're here! Hey, hi. hi, what's your name? I'm Joe Fowler. Hi, I'm Ron Popeil. I chose anybody. Hi, what's your name? I'm Tom Purvis, trainer to the trainers. And hi, I'm Mike Levy. Hold on to your power rod. But wait. What are you doing? Call now. Call now. Call now. Call or log on now. Call now. Call right now. Call in the next 18 minutes. Call in the next 16 minutes. Call in the next 7 minutes. Call these numbers right now. Hello and welcome to Call Now, where we plunge headfirst into the surreal world of infomercial. And while we can offer you free shipping, we can guarantee that the views and opinions expressed on this podcast are definitely those of this network. Woo! Thank you, Tim. My name's Dan Sturdivant. I'm joined, as always, by my co-hosts on this three men we've known as Call Now, and there is no need to reduce shape or firm this guy because we like mark pedrati just the way he is hello mark hey i'm really sore i did not want to hurt myself you should be and listen we've also got the reigning miss latina international el senor el rey david sandrini hello dave uh bienvenido <laughs> i am 78 64 no wait 780% more effective than uh than last time so, <laughs> wow yeah. the bar has been set pretty high free weights you could never really reach that failure point and we also have our call now resident fitness expert tom purvis hey tom hello guys hey. good to see you buddy are you ready to do this yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Let's abdo it. Let's abdo it. We're going to have to keep a running tally of abdo, abdo puns you got a title uh, throughout already. the show. I got it. Yeah. I got it. <laughs> I mean, man, for anyone who missed it, you can treat yourself to the link for the full Watch Party episode, both as a podcast and on YouTube. But last week, we got bent over with John Abdo's bun and thigh duel. Introducing John Abdo's Bun and Thigh Doer, the latest breakthrough innovation in body shaping, toning, and firming. So to be honest, our focus during last week's episode was largely on John's problematic interactions with and the welfare of the demonstrators for the product. So we really didn't get into the efficacy of this piece of machinery. Can we turn off the machines? That was a big miss by us, okay? That's dangerous. We've heard you. So this is the rotor racer. I've heard about it, I've never used it before. And part of me thinks that maybe subconsciously the three of us knew that we lacked the qualifications to really speak about it, right? So we're gonna make it up to you guys. We listened to what you wanted. We responded by finding an expert that meets your needs. I listened to what you wanted and I responded, creating a machine that meets your needs. Okay, you know him as the trend of the trainers, the face of the Bowflex for many years, and friend of the pod, the aforementioned call now fitness expert, Mr. Tom Purvis. Now officially, Tom, welcome back, and please help. <laughs> We're looking forward to this for what? What have we been talking about this? Three weeks now, so I'm primed and ready to go. I thought you were going to say yeah. like 10 years. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Since 2007, <laughs> I've been waiting. <laughs> yeah, if I had known this opportunity would have been available 10 years ago, I definitely would have been looking forward to it. And I would have started dyeing my hair. If I'd known we were going to do this 10 years later, you know? Split screen it, right? Yeah. <laughs> he definitely beat you to the punch on that. Yeah. He's GLH, you know? Shout out last time we talked to you. But the uh, babes are back. <laughs> yeah, this infomercial was an uncomfortable experience. <laughs> I mean, obviously, John loves fitness. His quest for fitness began over 33 years ago. And butts. Can I touch? Mm -hmm. And appears to be fairly well respected. Sure. As a member of the health and fitness industry. All right. Including his induction into the National Fitness Hall of Fame in 07. 2020. I can speak to all those things, too, whenever you'd like to hear a little bit about <laughs> what the Fitness Hall of Fame is and whether or not he's respected. The answer is... Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Postcard that baby. It's my birthday. It depends on the circles in which you're discussing it. So you just, whatever you want to bring up, and I'll do my best to be as moderately politically correct as possible. He just said it's not Russia. I want to know right now what that is. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah. we, we provide a service. Yeah. Is that your little brother? <laughs> He's a good looking kid. And we would love to hear all of your thoughts. Please. Mr. Purvis, the floor is yours. Appreciate it very much, Tim <laughs> Apple. Well, I first met John in 1989. 64. At the inaugural National Academy of Sports Medicine Educational Weekend. And he presented, well, wait a minute, you know. Uh-oh, 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 uh -oh. Uh -oh. Tom's going to come back with something, and then we're in trouble. <laughs> Tom exits stage left. I was going through this stuff actually two days ago. Oh, no. So I can document <laughs> I'm making the most 
reference Wikipedia page. So this is the first For him? really yeah. cheapo manual that <laughs> was the National Academy of Sports oh, wow. Medicine. Ooh, look at that stamp. Yeah, it's really yeah. dandy, right? Wow. It's like one of those <laughs> one of those ink pads that's got, you know, magically four different right. Mm -hmm. And then it was a mistake to like, no, people like that. If it's you fine. look on the um <laughs> see if I can look over there and see what I'm doing. Where is he? Peekaboo. Uh, Janitorial services. No. Up here at the top somewhere is me. <laughs> I'm Tom Purvis. I don't know. Right there, like number four. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you go down. Squeeze. Yep. And down. Oh. Squeeze. And you got squeeze. Fourth from yeah. the bottom. Okay. Oh. John Abdo, interpersonal skill. Because I was getting John's newsletter, I felt educated. Interpersonal skill. I got hairy legs. Oh. Yikes. Interpersonal oh. skills. And really what it should have been, and maybe actually later became, was self-promotion and general <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. Because... Um, <laughs> That was my minor in college. Yeah, it was it was all about John, that's for sure. And not, not a lot of, hey, trainers, here's how you might promote yourself in the community. And here's how you might. Anyway, I mean, well, it's supposed to be interpersonal skills. So he's supposed to be saying, here's how you would talk to a client. Go ahead and stand right here. Here's how to be appropriate. Evening gown muscles. Here's how to be ethical. Draw your own conclusions. Here's how to. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just, it was interesting. Over, he <laughs> taught maybe two or three more times. And it got interestingly inappropriate to the point to where the. Lady that was, uh, I don't even know if I should say this. The lady, I mean, they, Dave's going, well, sure, sure you should. Yeah. So the, <laughs> we'll mark the tape. You know, we protect our guests, don't worry. The lady that was the head of education, <laughs> he knew her from before. And so, but that doesn't mean you do like super comfortable ribbing. What's wrong, Eli? In the middle of a class of 60 people. And he's, at some point, it deteriorated down to, Kathleen, come up here and spread your legs. Uh-oh. Mm. Whoa. Uh-oh. But anyway, it's a mess. Whoa. <gasps> You're right. This is a mess. So I remember when I was in <laughs> Chicago, I'd never seen him before. Can you see that working? And he had for a mm. time, I don't know how, in a morning, kind of a workout show. And I remember watching him. The first time I saw him, and the first thing he said was, all right, guys, we need to warm up. So let's stretch out our tendons and our ligaments. Now, I don't know if you know what a stretch ligament is, but there's a grade one, two, and three. And um, that's a bad thing, right? I did not want to hurt myself. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad thing. Yeah. You go in the blue tent for that on Sundays. Yeah. If you warm up your ligaments with an ACL stretch, you're in surgery immediately prior to your workout. As a doctor, I would recommend <laughs> the H2O back. So it's just a mess. See, I would see him over the years and his... His whole thing was just to try to come up with a product. I got to show you this other product okay. over here. Yeah. The cell. I mean, if you had something pretty good, you're going to end up selling it probably to a commercial fitness right. equipment company. <laughs> Tom, yeah. I want to know about the Hall of Fame, too. Okay. Yeah. In the Olympics. Is yeah. he an Olympic trainer? Yeah, he trained some Olympians in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, he yeah. trained some Olympians. But, you know, this is going to sound terrible also, but training athletes is pretty darn easy. It's so easy. A child can do it. Because the reason they can do what they do is that they're pretty tolerant of getting the shit beat out of them. The truth is, it's going to be a challenge. So you can be a pretty terrible coach, strength coach, conditioning coach for those guys, and they can just take it. And that's the bottom line. Ultimately, that has very little to do with whether they metal or not I'm metal. because that's about 50 percent their skill level and about 50 percent who else shows up whoa, 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 whoa. yeah so Oof. this hall of fame yeah. thing is an interesting i'd like to learn more about it but it's an interesting little background there's a few guys that i've known in chicago that kind of would start these indirectly self-promoting things right where they wouldn't necessarily give themselves a I'm the first recipient of and first inductee into the Hall of Fame. You'll be first in line, Arnold. But something on that order where it's like, hey, we could start this. And then over the years, we could give it to ourselves. Ah, that is very sneaky. And we could give it to our buddies. <laughs> if you promise to tell a friend. Of and John's from Chicago. Oh, the sun shines deep. So yeah. there's a little bit of a heritage there in that thing. And I'll probably get myself in trouble talking about that because I don't know enough to do it. But when I look at who's friends of who's involved, that's kind of uh, yeah. interesting apple doesn't fall too far from the tree type of thing so yeah i wouldn't consider it while i would probably find a way to get inducted into it myself by the way you have to be 60 or over i believe to get inducted into it myself just because you can use it for promotion just like he does i would not begin to tell any physicians i've worked with that i have the stupid thing yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. it's so funny because i mean we're you know we're big sports fans here and I understand why the Hall of Fame is in Springfield, Massachusetts for basketball. It was invented there. The American inventor. Having fitness being in a place where it's cool to be there. Cool. I'm being cool here. But it may not really have any significance to the history of fitness. 
just seems kind of like a designation and money grab. And you don't need to confirm or deny that, but that's immediately when I think of it. And I don't know enough about it to do that, but I just, it would be a great thing to start if for another reason to say that you're the head of it. Yeah. 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 And to yeah. say, hey, uh, would you like to be in this thing? Um, well, yeah, there's some rules to getting in. I don't know how it works anymore, but anyway. It's not something where I would go, oh, my God, that's like being in the rock and roll. You know, he's not there with the stones or anything, okay? Right out of the Stone Age. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, totally unrelated side project. We are going to create the podcasting Hall of Fame. Huh. It'll be uh, in my basement. And guess who the first set of inductees are, huh? Yeah. I'm probably on, for us. I think I'm on the board, too. I just decided I'm yeah. on the board. <laughs> Congratulations. Proud of you. Does one of you have a, a toddler? Because it's always cute when they give out something. Especially if you have children. You know, they can hand you the award. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, there yeah. Go. They go yeah. down. Yep. We have our host. She's it. <laughs> yeah. So she's ready to go. Yeah. I was on the other day. Tony got the 2020 Lifetime Achievement Award. So it's like, you know, I think he's the most recognizable name on there. There's a few guys I know from there. Certainly Tony's the biggest name. There's a guy named Jim Flanagan, who's a really good guy and was part of the original Nautilus and stuff like that. And he's a He's an amazing guy with an amazing past. Yeah, so, you know, John, John. describes himself on johnabdo.com as having established himself as one of the most visible motivational educators for legions of athletes, coaches, and fitness enthusiasts worldwide, as an international authority on athletic conditioning, body sculpturing. Right there shows you're not an authority. Sounds like an art hobby. Mm -hmm. Because it doesn't exist. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fitness, longevity, nutrition, and life motivation. I have some questions about not necessarily the fitness stuff he's done, like from a machine tool program standpoint, but the books that he's written. He's an author. Wolves of Croton, the untold story of Milo and ultimate sexual health and performance, which is trade. Whoa, 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 whoa. What, Dan? Yeah. What? It's finally get your interest. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Was that a fiction mixed in with a pickup artist book? <laughs> What was that? Which one? Like, I don't know which title you're more offended and excited by because they're equally stuck. I'm confused about <laughs> the contradiction. Did he do like, is this like, who's the guy who did Scientology? L. Ron Hubbard. LRH. Is this like L. Ron Hubbard? Like, there's a little sci-fi and then he's like, ah, I gotta put this into practice so I can make some money and make a pickup artist book or something like that. Is that yeah. what's going on here? Watch. I don't know. I don't see any reason why it would be. I mean, it is the complete guide to achieving and restoring sexual vitality. <laughs> oh, you know what? Um, Oh you know why he has that? Are you going to tell us? I completely forgot. Somewhere on that list of stuff he's done, there has to be this, and he did a good job on this infomercial. I completely forgot about it. It was one of those looks like a talk show kind of things, and he's sitting, he's talking about male, ultimately testosterone enhancement type mm -hmm. stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the order of extends and all those wonderful things that have been on TV for decades, right? But um, <laughs> I forgot about that. He did actually an amazing, amazing job of coming off as a knowledgeable professional in that it was very different than his uh, feely, grabby, complete horse shit, P.T. Barnum fitness <laughs> shit. He was in the right lane for that, I guess, you know? That's great. Good for him. Yeah. I'm sure it was on for a long time, and that's usually an indication if they're buying airtime, they're doing all right. Wow. Yeah, right? Wow. He tags his bio with, if only one word was needed to describe John Abdo, it would be dynamic. I can't deny that. <laughs> <laughs> he is a pile of energy, man. I mean, and he's... He can rein it in and he can turn it on. And he's really good at, again, self-promotion and, you know, quasi Zig Ziglar stuff. I don't know if he's got like yeah. the charm that some of the guys we've seen have, though. He seems much more like a engaging trainer. You know what I mean? I mean, he's yeah. not like Joe Fowler. Like if you go broad. Buys lunch. Oh, no, 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 right? No. Yeah. yeah, he's not like a pitch. He's yeah. definitely got a very specific background. But yeah, Joe's a personality. He's a pitch man and he's good at it. And you got like the one, two punch. Yeah. John's definitely got what some people would consider expertise in this. The problem is if we actually sat down and critiqued the thing that I'm sure people have paid him to do and think we would, I'm betting. Okay, we have, we have an official bet. I would have a lot to say about that from a point of view of legitimacy, scientific evidence, most of that stuff. You know, you got a group of people, athletes in general, where they're not going to wash their underwear if they're winning. Laundry time is the worst time I have. So I'm not yeah. sure how much is really required <laughs> to overwhelm these people with quality. Quality? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, like, what his best transformative story with an athlete David is. David King, body transformation specialist. Not just, like, a, keep the lights on. You get the contradiction in the infomercial itself, which is, like, yeah. there's all these 
you know, gorgeous fit women who are doing the act in the live show. Let's look at Linda here. And then the call now bit, it's people who are less fit. My legs don't rub together anymore. We're like, oh, I transformed this thing was so great. And it was like, well, how does it do that? Let me show you how the machine works and I'll do it for you in under three minutes here. Okay. You know what I mean? Like it loses, it, like yeah. the whole thing is insane. One of the things after some of the products, specifically, I think abdominal products back in the mid nineties, when there was a dozen of those often knockoffs of each other on the air, uh-huh. ab trainer, ab roller, ab this and that and the other and all that stuff, pretty much crunch things. They were all claiming weight loss and none of them offered yeah. you any of the other things required. Like you can't just do crunches and change anything inside of you. And especially not what they're showing. So right. that's why some of them it actually became, and I don't know what kind of rules or regulations there really are. It's probably an FTC type of thing, but supposedly it was a rule at some point after that, where you had to offer, you had to at least say on there with a proper diet and with aerobics, yeah. you had to say something else. The do not diet. Plan. Not indicating yeah. that this thing would transform your big toe while you're doing crunches, you know, yeah. and that's one thing. But he is promoting the whole way through with his girls. I lost six pounds. The guy. It's just a great feeling to have lost this weight. That they're losing Mm -hmm. all this weight (laughs) and stuff. And that machine can't possibly do that. It's a scientific fact. So there's already an ethics problem. If he doesn't somewhere in there mention it, if there's at least not some fine print at the very, 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 very end. Almost everybody that has anything like that gets somebody to write a little booklet for it. 17 pounds per woman. And shoves it in the box, tell them it's a free gift or something. You know what I mean? Get some mileage oh, yeah, out of it. Yeah. You get my turkey brining or marinade booklet. There's barely a mention of it. The special do not diet eating plan. And I think it's actually yeah. one of the models who says like, oh, John's diet that he gave me. She says, John tells me what to eat and when to so eat. He teaches how to eat how when to eat what kind of combination of food okay. yeah yeah do you like hot fudge sunday yeah. it's like that's a weird way of saying that like it's difficult to what you did right now especially after john's just been touching your butt for a while yeah now let's look at jessica right here and so he's dominating her now look at morgan yeah i don't know man and it's a little <laughs> weird at that one part where it's like <laughs> anybody from the audience want to do this this is fun you want to try the paint stick how about you folks right here okay and one's a freaking professional Sports cheerleader. I am a former Dallas Cowboys cheerleader and a current cheerleader for a professional basketball team now. And the other ones, I miss that or the other. I'm Miss like, Latina International. I'm currently the reigning new Miss Latina International. Wow, fantastic. Wow. Those are the kind of people How that just convenient. randomly walk into studio audiences every day, <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 That's incredible. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. They had Ginger, the former basketball player. Hey, I'm Ginger. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I uh, played basketball for about eight years. And then Cindy. Sandy. The reigning Miss Latina International, and I can't find any record of it. I think in Russia they wouldn't be gone so easily. So I'm not trying to disparage Cindy and any of her accomplishments in the pageant circuit, but it doesn't live on the internet anywhere. Just take a look on the internet. Dan, those records were destroyed in a fire, Dan. <laughs> yeah, so Cindy, I'm sorry. I think it was a sister program to the Fitness Hall of Fame, actually. Ah, that is very sneaky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how they met. Yeah. Yeah. Fitness Hall of Fame pageants. Just spin off. <laughs> they met at the lobby of a Hampton Inn. And, uh... <laughs> but, well, so I think it is a good time for us to maybe dig in a little bit more to the infomercial and the bun and thigh doer itself. So usually for our product overview, I'll just lay out what we saw or how they described it. But for this week, having an expert in-house, I think we'll handle it in two parts. So I will lead off. All right, Dano. And I will act as the self-appointed public defender. Smashed by the magic bullet. Of the bun and thigh doer and do my best to present this product in a positive light. We've come to know it as the magic bullet. Or as positive as possible without perjuring myself. Back and to the left. And the state will be represented by Mr. Purvis of Oklahoma. So we'll do our best. So the John Abdo bun and thigh doer system. System. You got a system. I got a system. (laughs) Isolates and targets muscles within your buttocks and all sides of your legs and thighs for faster, safer results. More effective than traditional lunges, step-ups, or squats. As we heard during the show, 780% more effective. (laughs) The standing position provides a workout with virtually no strain on your back or neck and reduces shapes and firms with progressive resistance across 32 resistance levels. I rest my case. But someday, somewhere, someone may find out the damn truth. (laughs) See, if you just say that and you don't see it, that's like, oh, that sounds fine. 
Mm-hmm. So I will now cede the floor to, to Mr. Purvis for, for your The rebuttal. gentleman will sit. The gentleman is correct in sitting. Hold on. Let me ask you a question. I mean, in any realm, do you think this would work? Very good question. Like if you're already in shape, if you're a bodybuilder, do you think it would work? The answer is... This would probably work best on someone who has done nothing their whole life. You can just sit there and... Without a doubt. It looked like just a bungee cord. Well, and that's that's not so terrible. That's a reasonable form of resistance if you're trying to ship stuff around the world. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and I was actually looking at the mechanics of how it's applied, and I don't know, it's hard for me to believe it was intentional, but they actually did a fair job. I would love to point out some stuff on the infomercial somehow and show you where they actually did it. There's not all bad in anything. Not too bad. Right. One of the problems with this 780% or whatever it was. Proven to work up to 780% more effectively. They are, like on most infomercials, (laughs) using solely EMG for any version of scientific evidence that something is effective. You can tell how effective this machine is. That is an impossibility. That is a bastardization of EMG as a scientific tool. So when they see a spike on the EMG and they compare it to another exercise, and they go, look, this minuscule spike, look on this one. And the problem is the things you have to really do to compare that, number one, you can't compare strength or strength outcomes or anything else from an EMG. What it's telling you is electrical activity, which in no way tells you what the muscle's actually doing. In fact, when a muscle is fatiguing and doing its least is when the EMG will go the highest. I'm not saying that was the (laughs) case in this. I'm just saying EMG can easily be misused because it looks really cool and really scientific. And how could it be wrong? But you cannot use it that way. And you cannot necessarily compare two different exercises like a squat and this machine. You can't compare them via EMG because the resistance profiles are entirely different. Where this machine is difficult and where it's easy throughout the range is very different from where a squat or a lunge might be difficult or easy throughout the range. Therefore, I would expect the outcome of the test to be different because you're comparing apples to oranges. Tim Apple. Wow. Yeah. So you can take pretty much any EMG shit you've seen in an infomercial and you can just toss it. So let's just get rid of it. So we're tossing this one. See the streamers? Wow. Go on. <laughs> they had the two doctors, the Catch Brothers. Where are you from originally? From University of Michigan. They are legitimately, I'm not a big physiology person nor a big EMG person. I just defer to people who I work with, my colleagues who are, you know, ate up with it. Eat up, guys. Tell me how good that is. I love it. I love this kind of chicken. These two guys yeah. are a big deal, apparently. And these two guys... I think there are things people say in these things, like one of them says, I've never seen another machine that does this. This is the only exercise machine that I have seen and have experience with that really targets this particular area. You haven't seen any machines then, because I can show you, I don't know, 17 or 18 (laughs) dozen. (laughs) And I'm exaggerating. I can show you a dozen that act in the same way, but they're real and they're in gyms. Yeah. And anytime you're going to take something down to a home version, there's compromises without a doubt. But there are some basic rules for a lot of these things. Something that's supposed to move with a single joint, that's supposed to mimic the motion of a single joint. Very often what, they sh- what they're trying to do is get the axis of the device to line up with the axis of the joint, in this case, the hip. If you'll notice when they're leaning over this doing the glute part, the axis around which the machine is moving is below the pad meaning below their torso, certainly below the hip. So if you watch them go through the movement, you're going to watch the pad roll up and down their leg. It'll roll up when they extend their hip, it'll roll back down towards their ankle when they lower. So that's not necessarily a bad thing, but it wouldn't be a design that a real equipment engineer would go, yeah, that's the way we want that. Nobody eats like that. Nobody. You would go, yeah, "Yeah, that's the cheap way to do this, and nobody knows the difference anyway. Hey, that tastes great. I not like vegetables at all. And especially in like a rehab scenario, like you would never. Uh, You wouldn't use this in rehab. You wouldn't use this in rehab. You'd never have it. There's no way. So that physical therapist on there, you know, this funny thing is physical therapists don't know anything about equipment at all. At right. all. But she was also a former Miss Galaxy. So the fact that she says, I think it's great, I might go on. That's like me saying a quiche is good. What the hell do I know about it? You know? How many eggs? <laughs> <laughs> so the podcast I was going to pitch you called Tom's Quiches, you, you don't want to. Okay, well, Pass. I won't. You know what? We'll think of something different then. We'll have to workshop that, okay? <laughs> Aren't we kind of overlooking a little bit just the name of this thing? John Abdo's Bun and Thigh Doer. It is exactly what it's named. It's talking yeah. about sculpting your ass my legs don't rub together anymore and it's like i'm not trying to go against anything anybody's saying but dave to your point it's like 
Yeah, maybe it's just they wouldn't do rehab with it because it's sculpting your thighs and your ass. And booty. Yeah. It's an enhancement product. Not that that means anything or it's a good thing. I've never been able to hit anything like that before and get away with it and it'd be okay and it'd be legal. But that's what it is. Right. If you had to put it in a category, yes, it's under yeah. the thing of we're trying to transform you. But look at the amazing transformation after using QRB. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're trying to strengthen. To develop a strong and symmetrical lower body. And lose fat. Earn body fat. All in one thing. This is all in one. And we're trying to, and by the way, there's no such thing as an outer thigh muscle. It's a fantastic muscle. <laughs> <laughs> what about the upper front part? Jessica's doing the upper front part. That was my favorite. <laughs> Nachos, those are my favorite. The upper front of us? <laughs> Go to the gym next week. At, oh, I can't wait till upper front day. I'm going to get, I'm so amped for upper front day. Yeah. Oh. I'm looking at mine right now. I don't know. You just got to stretch a little bit. That's a bad posture. How are your upper fronts? Yeah. Got any berries? Well, they need, they need work. Mine need work. All right. So first of all, it's not done yet. <laughs> Tom, do you have any good upper front exercises you can share with David? <laughs> God. Oh, God. So in this same tone of things, He's talking about it being a, a muscle compressor. We're teaching the muscles to condense. But that sounds completely against anything I've ever heard. Where isn't it about elongating muscles? You can't do either one. Muscles shorten and lengthen, produce force. That's all they do. That's all I do. That's all they do. <laughs> They're either doing it really without much effort or with a lot, depending upon relative challenge. It's time for the Roto Razor Challenge. Something light can become a challenge if you do it a hundred times. It'll feel like a one rep max on the last one you do. So there is no, these words, this is when I'd love to have a billion dollars and fly to every one of these guys' houses and walk up to the front porch and go, let's talk about these words you said. Am I right or wrong? <laughs> Pilates uses this thing, we're going to get longer, stronger muscles. No, you're not. Uh -uh. No, you're not. No. Muscle is the length it is, and you can train it to <laughs> utilize its entire length. But Nobody's stretching out their hamstrings and then their hamstrings are dragging behind them on the ground because they're so long. You know? Yeah. No, did you see that, Chick? See how long her hamstrings were? Oh, man. <laughs> they're making up buzzwords. You know, it's like it's what's going on in their head and they're just making it up. Yeah. Yep. Oh, and then yeah. one of the things that specificity when looking at this again, the thing that made me most flip out, because I was just kind of watching, I was going, yeah, typical infomercial, yada, yada, yada. And then there's a thing he does that is just plain. It hurt my, not my heart. Where do you keep your ethics? You could put it in the trunk of your car. No, wherever that is, it hurt me. Momentum. Okay. Yeah. There's a place where he's got a tape measure. The inches we need are everywhere around us. Oh, you yeah. with me? You remember that? Yep. Mm -hmm. so he's got no. a tape measure and he gets on his machine, starting with the leg, the legs down, and he puts the tape measure on and measures oh. it's one of those retractable ones. And as it comes up, he goes, look, this makes you smaller. From the top of her buttock to the back of her knee measures 15 yeah, inches. Yeah, this is a muscle compressing system. Then he has someone standing up, and he puts it on them while they're standing, and they squat down, and he goes, look, this makes you bigger. At 21 inches, she gained six inches of length in this whole region of her body. Because the tape measure changed. So basically, he started with your hip bent in one and went to extension. He started with the hip extended in one and then bent it in the other one. So he just, but that, that is... Yeah. Man, that's not even good lying. The problem is, is people have been lied to. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what he says. We're teaching the muscles to condense, not to enlarge. Very important to understand that the button thigh doer is a tightening machine. Can't you imagine you're teaching okay. the muscles? What I envision is a classroom with these muscles in it. And you're going, guys, you've got to understand. I just did it right in front of you. What do you think? That's just him hitting on girls. Hey, I like toasted buns. I don't know about you. Like, that's all that is. It's just yeah. like you have them in a room. And he's like, oh, I'm just going to keep saying a bunch of things because I know they're concerned with fitness. Back fat and bat wings. And they're just going to listen because I'm in the workout hall of fame or whatever. Listen up. That's all it is. Like, that's the only thing. <laughs> Dominant man, John. John. I need a reason to pull out a tape measure. Like. 19 inches. All of those yeah. things. Like. Didn't I'm with you 100%. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. yeah. Now let's look at Jessica right here. Let's look at Linda here. Now look at Morgan. Can I touch? Yeah. The last thing on the actual piece of equipment <laughs> itself, question I had. So like just looking at it, because they also do the, the silly give you the arm band thing if you want to do the upper body workout with it too. Sensational upper body kick. I forgot about that. Couldn't they have, you could have incorporated abs into it if you were like, if you do this, it's for your abs. But if you just like slide forward. And you can hook, like, lock that bar up. You can make it a Roman chair, right? Like, you could actually do something on it. Dude, you are not going to want your body weight supported by that thing. Yeah. I heard it was gym quality construction, though. No? <laughs> <laughs>
Jim Hope. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like an ironing board. I believe you've got some very pressing problems. Like the fold-out is just an ironing board. <laughs> <Yeah>. Same thing. <laughs> the latest weapon in the war on wrinkles. Probably gets close to that. Yeah. Maybe a really bad ironing board it gets close to. <laughs> Dude, I like that professional crease. There's one more thing to look out for. He does mention several times, puts no strain on your low back. No pressure to the back. And when you watch oh, yeah. one of the, I don't know if it's just one of the, b-roll thingies or if it's actually on the show but there's a there's a point where they got this kind of um three-quarter angle on this girl and you're watching as her legs come up and her back's going into extension every time which is not necessarily a bad thing unless you're throwing it there but it's like there's no way in the world for that to occur without she's going to feel something and if she was super out of shape she's <laughs> going to feel a lot in her low back Can I touch? Mm, yeah, there's no way around yeah. it one thing that's a yeah. little bit of a thing, and I'm going to use some fancy words again. They're not hard to figure uh -oh. out, really. But the other, besides a resistance profile, there's this thing called a strength profile. Basically, humans are not the same strength in any part of a range of motion in any part of the body. So if I, when my arm is straight and I'm doing something, I'm not as strong here as I might be here, and it changes all the way up. You follow me? Mm -hmm. yep. This thing, because honestly, the leg goes, you go from your leg hanging like a pendulum where it's no resistance as your leg gets straight out it becomes in essence heavier just like if you held your arm straight out all day long harder than with, with it down by your side so right. however the bigger the person's leg the bigger the user's leg the heavier it's going to be when you get to the top which is where you're also the weakest well i have a stove is that going to be a oh, problem it's fine. Yeah. with where your hip is the weakest which means your low back is going to be really interested in trying to kick in to get that sucker up there so there's just some basic biomechanics that has escaped this whole group of EMG experts and certainly the guy that stretches his ligaments. And that's important to me. Yeah, and, and not to mention the height, like the height of each person is going to affect that particular it's motion. It's probably, did it, was it adjustable? It was adjustable to like three notches. Oh, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> no, but I said it, it covers all people, short and tall. Easily adjustable for any height, short or tall. Oh, okay. oh well, they're good. I must have missed right. that. <laughs> what, what if I'm technically average? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously, we had a number of questions, and it bears repeating. I don't think that John said more than one sentence at a time on camera. Just kind of all felt off. And choppy chopped straight through my ribs and i know that it was shot in a different decade in july of 1994 with different social expectations mm -hmm. but each and every time that he felt the urge to go over and touch another woman's buns but I, I just kept asking why religion greed money sex but why 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 all right, and as always, it is easy to dismiss this stuff as a joke, but we have to consider the whys of each show, and there are a lot of them. Okay, so devil's advocate a little bit here, guys. What crime was actually committed here other than John and his cameraman really, really liking butts? And booty. Well, here's what I think. Dun, 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 In the world of infomercial, <laughs> you cannot dismiss the gimmick. This product coupled with the Abdoer and other things that John did not endorse, like the Shakeway, even the Gazelle, et cetera, et cetera, are memorable by virtue of being a gimmick, visually. Hey, yes. you know the Gazelle can help your love life? And although I can't think of anything more depressing than some poor, frustrated, out-of-shape mother trying to hide this in the corner of her living room before some holiday, well, <laughs> who knows? Maybe the flip side of that is that those cheerleaders that pop up <laughs> midway through this freak show are also right. I am a former Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. Maybe it's better than squats and lunges. It's university tested and proven to work better than lunges, squats, and step-ups. I don't know. Maybe it leans instead of bulks. Does she look macho to you guys? I mean, if you couple it with a 400-calorie diet and some wind sprints for <laughs> dessert, how could it not? <laughs> I'm not an expert. Yeah, that's a good point. The truth is, <laughs> in infomercial world, the gimmick is fair game. This is what I do just before the big game. And although I can and will make fun of this six-packed ass pound until I'm sick, <laughs> who the hell would listen? So, yes. boys, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think six packed ass hound is obviously the title of the episode. <laughs> and I think that you're right. It's like, all right, this is weird. Now. It's less funny <laughs> when, and I'm sure Tom's going to agree when a workout gimmick is used because it's 
freaking unhealthy. I did not want to hurt myself. You know what I mean? Like it's, <laughs> that's what's like a little scarier about, you know, a yeah. workout product being a gimmick, right? It's not a goofy blender or a weird looking saw. A band saw? Right. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> You're promising people they can change their lives. I don't know. Weird looking saws sound dangerous. That's not only expensive, that's dangerous. But- oh yeah, right. Those are very dangerous. Yeah. Sorry, but different kind of dangerous. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I gotta tell you, I don't you got a thing that is supposed to be all about butts and you're trying to sell it to women or a woman. I don't know what else you do but show butts for 30 minutes. And booty. Seriously. Yeah. What else would you do? Yeah. yeah. That's all you got. That's all I do. So it's even to me it's the more unethical thing. The weirder thing is that they're talking about total body weight loss. That's the part that bothers me the most. Earn body fat. It's like show butts all day long. It's yeah. a butt machine, but stop talking about losing your belly and stuff, please. The abundant thigh doer system will help you lose those pounds and lose those stubborn inches fast. Remember, your results aren't just possible your results are inevitable you, know? yeah. you have to be in his inner circle of 400 calorie a day women for that to work it's the final touch yeah. which is bullshit and that's where the infomercial <laughs> fails it's like wait a minute let me pick you out of the audience who wants to do this anybody want to try to button thigh door it's like oh you <laughs> you women who have hypnotized you do this it's like no no, no. that's when <laughs> that's when no you're crashing and burning man like it's it's not real anymore that research stuff done for those shows they certainly there's probably some that are just complete nonsense but for the most part when bowflex tried to do that stuff it's a nightmare because if you get 30 people and you're trying to do it for six weeks, you're lucky to have half of them when it's over because they just, the biggest incentive is they might get on TV. I'm currently the reigning new Miss Latina International. Wow, fantastic. And that's a huge incentive for a lot of people. But then the funny thing about that is, like the girls that were on there. Now look at Morgan. They are so uncomfortable. When you put a real person, for the most part, off the street in front of a camera and the red light goes on, Man, it's yeah, it's exactly it's exactly like Dan. You can tell that he had to work years to get past that, and he can still pull it off again when he needs to. It's 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 a mess trying to get those. So the last fifteen that were in your group, your study or whatever, that were like, man, I'm going to be on this thing. The fact that they could say a word you'd understand is pretty amazing already. Jenny, you're going to love that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was a rough ride with that. And they had a diverse crowd. How many people in my audience have vegetable juice extractors at home? Right. They had a lot of normal, goofy looking people. Hi, Craig. What's your name? Betsy. Hi, Betsy. Oh. <laughs> it would have been awesome. There was a, a gentleman, large ball gentleman, who seemed very interested in the demonstration and would have loved to have been closer i'm thinking it looks magic that would have been hilarious yeah. it would have been amazing if they called lurch up and be like all right pal see if this can support your weight now i'm 250 don't touch anybody that's john's job <laughs> yeah. and just you know let the big fella run <laughs> yeah that would have been a comeback i just believe that i uh, made a difference in my comeback for this infomercial yeah absolutely yeah. i was just <laughs> thinking that mark yeah and totally redeem yourself yeah. absolutely <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I think it'd be so fun if every <laughs> infomercial used the same stock crowd footage. Coaches filmed before a studio audience. You know? Yeah. yeah. And it should be like black yeah. and white, like from the 1932 Olympics or something, some <laughs> grainy film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Suits and cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like something yeah. Monty Python would do, right? <laughs> you can just hear the film yeah. crackling. <laughs> yeah. Still have like the newsreel music behind it, too, every time you cut away. Like, yeah. <laughs> was the audience real what do you think guys it had yes. to be. yeah it had to yeah. be right i feel like yeah. they had to be because cindy and jenny that would have been way more complicated to fake them having sitting so close to not audience and making it look like audience than just having yeah, but the thing the is it's screen. just like leno or fallon or whatever they have a big sign that says applause i mean it's not like they don't know what to do yeah. They tell in the beginning if you want your face on this thing, you got to do something. Are we early or something? You can't just sit there mm. bored. I'm boring. Within five minutes, I'm bored. You know what I mean? So there's mm. incentive. These people, some of them go to these things for a goof. Uh, I did it as a goof. But some of them, TV does weird things to people, man. I was yeah. in the. Well, oh, did you see me? I was on the infomercial. Let's roll it back for a second. It's like, Ooh, let's see it. Come on. There's a woman. Mm-hmm. Her name is Jan Lazer. Jan Lazar, and I'm from Red Deer, Alberta, Canada. And she appeared on both the Ron Popeil automatic pasta maker infomercial. That's the variety of the pastas. That's so important. You're not eating the same thing every night. And also an episode of Amazing Discovery. And your name? Jan. Jan, you found a painting underneath all that? And how do you know that? That's all I do. Where she was using QRB to refinish furniture. I certainly did. I put the QRB on and I found this, discovered it, and started wiping very quickly. Because you're 100% right. And at her nursing home, she was like a profiled person. And she's like, her acting credits include the Ron Popeil automatic pasta maker and 
<laughs> Amazing discoveries. I'm like, that pretty much ruins the legitimacy of the audience right there. Her acting credit. I was like, well, you know what? Yeah. I mean, I think she might have just been going off into the sunset and trying to be romantic about the days of yours. So that's fine. I'm not going to say anything poor about Miss Laser. But that thought of like, if I can just get on TV, because my guess is like, she's probably a woman who moved to LA to be an actress. What do you think? And she ended up on two infomercials, and then she just ate off of that the rest of her life. Mm, that looks good. Can I have one of those? Like, I'm sure every holiday at the Laser House, they only ate pasta and refinished furniture. All right, Dan. The dark turn of it all is Requiem for a Dream. Yeah. The whole part with, uh, what's her name? Ellen Burstyn. Ellen Burstyn, yeah. Burstyn, yeah. yeah. That's a real thing. And I know it's dramatizing that, but, like, people yeah. just got to get on TV to tell their friends. And also, okay, so you're in this particular part of L.A. where I think this one was shot in LA probably, right? It doesn't matter. Like people are around a yeah. movie studio and there's actresses around that are also like fitness freaks. Squeeze those glutes on your way down. It's not like you're telling them you're going to be on an episode of Seinfeld. Like, do you want to do this fitness show? And like, yeah, of course. Right. You know, I don't care what it is. You know, I'll, I'll be on a fitness Does show, me? you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I thought you never asked. Usually these studios are more <laughs> like a local TV channel. Yeah. They're really small. Yeah. And because they're cheap, but you know, oftentimes the cheaper cuts. Yeah. yeah. You get a Bowflex infomercial. Yeah. They would cost about half a million dollars to produce. This thing was probably less than six figures. Thousands and thousands. It's weird. Oh. You really don't notice it in the quality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where'd the money go? <laughs> yeah. To, to the unions, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> it's John's legal fund. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Multiple tape measures. But yeah, we only shoot in Missouri for a reason. The studio is in Missouri. I thought Tom was going to bring up the tape measure that he pulls across the studio. He's like, this is how much weight this group of people have lost. Is that what was that, Dan? I hate the combined inches thing. I hate this song. It's the most, that's. Yeah, the combined inches, yeah. That must have been at the end. I didn't make it that far. It's not that hard. God bless you. <laughs> then they go, oh, I lost. 45 inches from my body. It's like, you know, you can do MRI slices and come up with about three miles of loss. Yeah. 23 inches and chain. Depending on how you slice <laughs> it. Chop straight through my ribs. Yeah. <laughs> so he teases it early on. He's talking about like, oh, wait till you hear about all the people and all their success. And then he's like, I got a tape measure. He's like, I'll, I'll show you it later. I'll show you exactly how much weight and in inches they all lost together. You'll want to see this. Great, John. <laughs> and he comes back and says they lost a combined, I think it's like 174 inches. Get this. In only 21 days, my user group lost over 74 pounds and 175 inches. That's amazing. In their 21 days, and they got to go on a shopping field trip. Check out what happens to some of my Dewar students when they go shopping. And that was very confusing. I just got to tell you, I, I cannot yeah. imagine anybody who's really, really an expert in anything talking about something that's in his field <laughs> and saying stuff like that. I can't imagine it unless it's a Saturday Night Live parody. I mean, that's literally where this thing should be. It kind of had those vibes. Yeah. <laughs> you could definitely see Chris Kattan coming out with a couple of big fake teeth being specificity <laughs> yeah, or, or, or tim and eric i mean there's yeah. moments of this where it's like you're watching a tim and eric like they just made up a product and they don't break character and john you're, never breaks character and you're, you're expecting right. him to do it once and they don't tell him right. it was a goof wait is this a goof but there's no goof in here it's time for the runnies we all know infomercials love to claim that the products they're pitching are award-winning but let's not forget that they wouldn't have any of those imaginary awards without the hard work of the stars of these infomercials, and that's why each week, the boys hand out the Ronnies, their acknowledgement of the greatest moments of these informative and supposedly objective works of art. They're named in honor of the godfather and patron saint of TV pitchman, me, Ron Popeil. Well, so, in a normal week, we'd have the Ronnies. Right. But this week, since we have a qualified opinion in the house, you know, maybe we'll call them the Tommies. The trainees? Nah, regardless what we call them, the three of us will go through this week's categories. And Tom, you can feel free to pick your winners. Yeah, do it better than that. We go Outback Steakhouse rules here. Okay, no rules, just right. <laughs> we got a few categories that we'll get through. The first being the Lynn Gerhardt There's a treasure underneath. Award for Best Value Proposition. Mm. So it was difficult <laughs> to select nominees for this one, but our nominees are based on how they really try to sell it, is that it's direct, okay? 
but this is a buns only product. Some experts call it specificity. Second nominees, it's quick. Quick way for you to firm up those buns, hips, and thighs. They don't mention how long you have to work out on it, but they do say in 21 days or less that you'll go from sagging to bragging and be bun believable. So that's, there you go. So literally, you can go from a beginner to bun believable in 21 days or less. Okay. It's safer than other workouts. So safety is back in a big way. It's safe. It's an ironing board. How dangerous are those? Celine, you've got some very pressing problems. Those only kill dozens of toddlers every month. Especially if you have children. And finally, our last nominee for the Lynn Gerhart is innovation. I don't know how I could do this at home with any other machine. Okay. It's one of a kind. And two doctors who are brothers who definitely still live in an apartment together say they can't figure out why other manufacturers haven't done something like it before. So that makes it innovative, kind of. This is the only exercise machine that I have seen and have experience with that really targets this particular area. Yeah. They're all bad. They're all bad. It's a maybe the first one. It's a bun machine. That's about it. You have to go to the butt blaster. A bun sculpting machine. Sculpting their bodies. Hashtag buns only. It's a fantastic muscle. Yeah. Bunsonly.com. No, I, I got a better one. Go for it. Do it! I like to go through them all first. You gonna tell us? Buns only. Hot dogs and buns. 21 days or less. In 21 days, guaranteed. It's safe, <laughs> as Tom pointed out. Tim Apple. There's no way that this thing is totally safe. Safe way for you to develop toned buns. It's impossible. Nothing is safe. Innovation, it's one of a kind. <laughs> through innovation in body shaping, toning, and firming. I love it. That's mine. I'm picking that. One's mine. You can't have it. <laughs> it is truly one of a kind. This is the only exercise that allows you to isolate the glute and the hamstring from this position. It's the stupidest thing ever. Become a doer today. You're aligning yourself with the Clever Catch Brothers? All right. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> I get it. It's a legal thing. Yeah. <laughs> We have to check your campaign contributions, too. Although the Second Amendment people, maybe there is. I don't know. But yeah, I think, you know what? I wanted to go with the quickness because it's so arbitrary. And again, they don't tell you how much to use it. In just 20 to 30 minutes, three times a week. Like, they're not like, oh, 20 minutes, three days a week. I like that. Have you ever heard that one? All right, Dano. But there's just no guidance. Like, it's just buy it and then 21 days later. Watch how easy this is. It's going to be great. Because you get bungee cords and an ironing board. The latest weapon in the war on wrinkles. You're welcome. We want to say thank you to Jan Muller, right? So for me, I love the false optimism created by the dream of transforming your body in 21 days Ooh. with this system. System. You got a system. I got a system. system. They're all offensive, but I, I have to go along with Dave. <laughs> yeah. The innovation because... Oh, man. <laughs> I can sit right here and think of four machines that were around in the late 80s that are look exactly like it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. But they were commercial, a piece of equipment that actually you probably could set a car on top of. You could put it in the trunk of your car? So oh. the idea of innovation, it's... Uh, it's the most appalling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one of a kind. The, uh, the whole idea is one of a kind. <laughs> it's four of a kind. And, yep. Yeah. It's definitely one of a kind. Introducing John Abdo's Bun and Thigh Doer, the latest breakthrough innovation in body shaping, toning, and firming. This is the only exercise machine that I have seen and have experience with that really targets this particular area. This is the only exercise that allows you to isolate the glute and the hamstring from this position. Some experts call it specificity. All right, Dave, nice job. Congrats. I had a feeling about that one. Well, that means we're heading over to the Nancy Nelson. Hi, what's your name? Formerly the Terry Scott looks magic. Award for Best Testimonial. Buckle up, kids. We've got about 1,400 nominees. They come in hot and heavy before we hit two and a half minutes. So they go, sound on tape. Introducing John. John. For one sentence. It's called the Bun and Thigh Door. Boom, testimonial. So our first one is Jessica, our 26 year old makeup artist who lost two inches off of her thighs. And she's very pleased. I lost two inches off of each of my thighs. We have Patricia, who is a two timer here on the testimonial train, 50 year old cake designer who lost four dress sizes in 18 days. I lost. Four dress sizes. We have Ilsa, the 48-year-old full-time mother who is not jiggling anymore. I wasn't jiggling as much. Nice. We have Amy, the 38-year-old photographer and former member of Heaven's Gate who just loved John for his <laughs> knowledge. With that knowledge into my body. <laughs> we have former Miss Galaxy, Kimberly Phillips, who thinks it's a great machine and endorses it. I really feel that it definitely targets the buttock. Despite being the only person whose buns we don't see. Ooh, let's see it. Despite her title, Kimberly, bad job by you. We love you anyways. 
We have Roseanne. No, not that. Uh oh. We have Roseanne, the 50 year old business owner who finally gets to wear that dress she bought two years ago. I'm going to wear that dress tonight. Because why wouldn't you? Why are you in a tuxedo? We have Big Scott. The looks 35, feels like 50 marketing executive who finally fits into his old suit. Now that I've completed the Bun and Thigh Door program, I fit back into all of my suits. Maybe him and Roseanne could get it by D. You know, they both got some, some old clothes, looking fresh, feeling fine. Do you like hot fudge Sundays? And last but certainly not least is Dana, who only says she's on screen for the exact amount of time that it takes her to say, my legs don't rub together anymore. My legs don't rub together anymore. <laughs> Those are our nominees for our best testimonial. And I know that Scott seems enticing. I feel great. I put him on in front of the mirror. Because he's obviously a ladies man. Man got even better results. He is Mr. Steal Your Girl right there. Yeah. Watch. He's looking great. And speaking of clarity. He's wearing that 48 regular now, just looking fit. Fits in my hand, great. He's ready to roll. The roll and bold. Ilsa, I know, Dave, you're very excited. I'm pretty excited about it. All three times we saw Ilsa. In two days, I could feel a firmness. Ilsa. But Dana just yelling that her legs don't rub together anymore. And that's the only time she shows up. Just unreferenced any other time. I am Team Dana. For these, I will say that as ridiculous as they all were, most of them were okay on camera. I look okay. Like they gave a pretty good reading. Not like I look bad. Even though you're like, yeah. this is, there's no way this is. Like it wasn't as bad as um, Contact Body Blast. Contact Body Blast treats the mind and the body. Oof. But these weren't in studio, were they though? No, they were pre-recorded, yeah. So it's the 35th yep. take. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> At least they got one. But still, Ooh. it's better than. A lot of times we don't get there. Yeah, right. right. Broken holes. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Dana was good. I thought Dana was good. good. Scott was good. I'm Terry Scott. But he wasn't great. Oh, gosh. Like, you were like, oh, this guy's going to knock it out of the park, and he didn't. Yeah, that's a good point. Miss Galaxy was fine. Miss Galaxy shows us her sexy cover model photograph. But yeah, I'm sticking with Ilsa. You have to go to the butt blaster. And because <laughs> even going back, she seemed like the one of the group that was actually kind of earnest about it. Bun and thigh doer. Maybe it did work for her. Or she's a really good actress. What is this about an award? Either way, she seemed kind of natural and she was like, yeah, it was fine. Like, I really like this thing and it worked for me. So honesty gets it for me in this one. I'll take Ilsa because she's the only one that seemed believable. I can't believe this. I'm telling you. And also, Dave, not to hurt my own case, but Ilsa was also front and center in the shopping gambit. Check out what happens to some of my Dewar students when they go shopping. But I like that she was the happiest shopper, too. So, all right. She's an important part of the show. It's funny, guys. I'm going to split one of you because I thought with Dana, the rubbing the legs together. My legs. And I thought the Ilsa, the jiggling thing. The jiggling. Those were. The word jiggling. Well, yeah. But like when I thought about <laughs> it and when I'm thinking about it now, it's like. Well, they're just trying to fix these one thing. This machine might be able to help them fix this one thing. I'm going to wear that dress tonight. I might get the self-esteem up. I feel great. And help them in some sort of way. And I'm like, you know what? There might be a bright side to this thing. You have to go to the butt blaster. So I am actually going to go with Dana because I thought her one line was poignant enough. Dave, if Ilsa had one line about not jiggling, it would be a little closer, but... I wasn't jiggling as much. Yeah, hey. yeah I'm going Dana. My legs don't rub together anymore. <laughs> I don't know. There's some really good points. The thing that pops out in my mind is, you mentioned a cake designer. What was her name? That was Patricia. And with that bun and thigh doer, I was down to a size 10. Listen, if you're a cake designer and you lose any weight, you're kicking ass. <laughs> <laughs> Four Whoa. sizes yeah. in 18 days. Ooh. Yeah. On a 100% cake diet. So, come on, that's something. <laughs> yeah, right? yeah. And then the other thing is, it just strikes me that this name Elsa, she had to have been at one point in time an East German swimmer. You have to go to the butt blaster. So she really yeah. made a pretty huge transformation <laughs> from that. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Those guys are close, but I got to tell you, the one I hated the most was the physical therapist. And I can say that because I'm a physical therapist. Kimberly's also a licensed physical therapist. Oh, Miss Galaxy herself. Ooh. Kimberly Phillips and certified physical therapist. Yeah. After yeah. reviewing the bun and thigh doer and using it myself, I really feel that it definitely targets the buttock, hip, and upper thigh region. And I highly endorse this product. I think it's a great machine. She just sits behind a computer. Yeah, she was the worst read. Ingredients. Is she was definitely yeah. the least polished on camera one. When your life is on the line, it better be a power diet. Well, you start to kind of see spots when you only have 300 calories. <laughs> it was 400 a minute ago. What, you, what happened? Well, she was Miss Galaxy. Oh. <laughs> on the Abdu do not ever eat diet. Not the, just the do not. Yeah, don't. He calls me every hour to see what I mean. So he teaches how to eat. 
how, when to eat, what kind of combination of food. <laughs> wow, Miss Pat coming out of left field. You know what? Lose four dress sizes in 18 days while still racking, stacking cakes. Congratulations, Patricia. That's a good one. Well, with the bun and thigh doer, I lost four dress sizes. I lost six pounds, almost 20 inches, and only did it in 18 days. I feel great. I just feel great. I wasn't jiggling as much. My legs don't rub together anymore. And with that bun and thigh doer, I was down to a size 10 from a size 14. That's good results. Good pull. Well, this one might feel a little bit close to home. The Barry Ozer. If you want to see what 13 inches looks like. <laughs> award for best piece of the package. All right. So here's what's included with your 1495 30 day trial that are included, or even if you have to ask your operator for them this week, you know, it's special week, we'll lump them in. Okay. So you'll receive not one, not two, but three instructional DVD workouts. Bun on the run routine, amazing bun, believable routine, and the quick no excuses workout. You'll also receive John's 21 day swift and lift plan that includes an exercise journal and motivational guidebook and a special do not diet eating plan. Also, ask your operator how you can get John's sensational upper body kit and exercise DVD, a $50 value. This bonus turns your bun and thigh doer into a total body home gym. But wait, there's more. If you call now, John will include his motivational audio CD loaded with special tips to help accelerate your results. Oh, wow. And you'll also receive a free online membership to the now defunct John's <laughs> bun and thigh doer website an over $200 value. Beautiful. Yeah. I still like the idea of people... Yeah loading things on audio cds like mm. talking about amazing loading things on them yeah instead of doing a podcast we should just burn writable cds and mail them you've got mail to anyone who's listened to an episode so far you know we'll send a stack of writables with it if you really liked it you know just burn those you know get the pass those around to people if That's you so promise to tell a friend about it so we can get some word of mouth advertising mm -hmm. go real <laughs> grassroots you know i think i'm on to something there i'm gonna Write that one down. I'll Do that, Dan. <laughs> There's no question about this. I have to go with the 21 days swift lift plan. John's 21 days swift lift plan. That includes an exercise journal and motivational guidebook. Can I show you something here? And a special, this is important. Do not diet eating plan. Slight change of plan. That's by far the best one. That's the best part. Yeah. It's the foundation of health and just don't do it. So yeah, I'm going with that. <laughs> Do not diet. Do not exercise. Yeah. Do not live. What am I paying for? Dan reading through this and Tom telling us about how he's a pickup artist, basically, <laughs> is that all of these things are to ensure that he's omnipresent. You know what I mean? It was like, oh, if you're bored, then just make sure you go on my website. Just take a look on the internet. When you're driving to the gym, just put in the audio CD and I'm talking to you. <laughs> listen up. You know what I mean? Like Specificity. Well, you, oh, listen, <laughs> like you, you have some thoughts in your head. Might as well write them down about me and the exercise journal. You know what I mean? It's pretty messed up. Whoa, you're right. This is a mess. <laughs> and they're so <laughs> janky, you know, that I'm sure that he just came up with it on the spot. And of course, in his brain, he's just like, oh, yeah, we'll just, you know, we'll make them like this. And so I'm like, well, I think that's just it's all about you, John. Anyway. <laughs> Yes, the exercise journal. He's like, did you not see my presentation on interpersonals? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Or always personals, I call them. I'm, you know, you're omnipresent. <laughs> Watch. No, he's within your personal. Uh, That's what he took as interpersonal. Like, yeah, yeah. He's like, no, I'm inside. <laughs> but Mark, definitely the exercise journal wins because it's yeah. the funniest one. Whoa. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The CD, the CD is pretty good. I like the idea of listening to him on the way to the gym, say weird things to you. We're teaching the muscles to condense. But mm. the exercise journal is the funniest. Just the mm -hmm. visual of it. Look at that. Like write things down about Man. what you think about my workouts and my machines and my abs and my everything. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I'll go with that. I don't know, guys. A wise man once said that motivation is the death of all goals. Who said that? Okay. So having a motivational guidebook in there, I feel is a real shot against that. Who said that? What's the matter, smart ass? You don't know any fucking Shakespeare? The Swift Lift plan. I don't know. Some. Okay. I think he was in an infomercial one time. I don't even remember. Okay. Keep your back straight. But the fact that you get three instructional DVDs. AM, FM, radio. Yep. There's one and a quarter moves you can do on this. 64 different exercises in your home. 64? He also talked about none of them during it, right? 
He just talked about the four exercises, which are the four directions you can face while you're leaning against this thing and moving your leg. Jessica's doing the upper front part. I can't imagine what is on those DVDs. Watch. How is he saying that there's multiple workouts? Well, could there be one where they actually put the machine on someone's shoulders and do squats with it? Hold on to your power rod. Lay down and bench press the machine. Sensational upper body kit. Girl, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. The quick no excuses one is the one where they mention the word cardio. The quick no excuses workout that helps you burn even more fat faster. Like now you're really getting it, fit. It took three DVDs to mention cardio. Yeah. And they glance by it. That's what happens when you're working with an Olympic conditioning coach, right? <laughs> 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 Although my training has led me to four Olympic medals. Tom, who gets to take home the Barry Ozer? Well, I'm going to flip it around a little bit this time in terms of why I'm getting ready to say what I'm going to say. Uh, I actually think from an infomercial point of view, no matter how stupid it sounds, it's just brilliant. The idea of a diet where you basically eat. Special do not diet eating plan. Right, this no dieting <laughs> eating plan is just freaking brilliant it's just downright elegant just saying that makes me yeah. happy with that knowledge into my body <laughs> you know i can hear people if they heard that one phrase they'd be like I, screw the machine keep the machine i want this no diet eating plan that's just yeah. brilliant brilliant yeah mm -hmm. good point yeah sometimes you gotta stick with the experts so some experts call it specificity good win it falls in there dump it in that goes with the overwhelming majority here <laughs> i have no choice but to present the barry Ozer award to the the swift and lift plan that includes the do not eating plan yeah there is a lot there yeah. that's a meaty one mm -hmm. So literally, you can go from a beginner to unbelievable in 21 days or less with my Swift Lift program. So you go from sagging to bragging in 21 days or less with my Swift Lift plan. John's 21 day Swift Lift plan that includes an exercise journal and motivational guidebook and a special do not diet eating plan. Quick side note, Tom, did you ever meet Barry Ozer? My mom didn't recognize me. Because the lead in on the 2001 version is, remember Barry Ozer? Remember Barry Ozer? And we're like, are we supposed to meet Barry Ozer? I've been heavy all my life. We forget? I don't know if, I remember actually saying that, but it seemed like they were going to do something. They were supposed to roll him in earlier? Before. And they didn't? I don't know. Or maybe, it was he not in a previous infomercial? No, he wasn't in a previous one. That was where he came in. I don't know. Maybe they screwed up and that was supposed to be the intro to the second pod or something. And, you know. Get the Stilsons on the phone. I did meet him one time years afterwards. Nice. At some convention or something. He came, nice. comes up and his voice was really distinct. And he goes, hey, I'm Barry Ozer. And I went, remember Barry Ozer? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> he kept the weight off, by the way. He went from 239 pounds to 174 pounds. Oh, I have to show you this. Nice. Nice. You remember right at the beginning when John's talking about he wasn't always in shape? He wasn't always this way. His quest for fitness began over 33 years ago when he was depressed and 50 pounds overweight. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's two pictures of him. And the one on the left, when I was looking at it tonight, really struck me. Back and to the left. As looking exactly like Son of Sam. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say Pablo Escobar. But yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my call last yeah. week. Yeah, what's his yep. name? Berkowitz or whatever this guy? David Berkowitz. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Son of Sam. That's an yeah. exclusive. Wow. Yep. Good validation, Dan. All right, Dano. Yep. We need a... Twinsies. Did we just become best friends? Yep. Some kind of Sam doer or something. I don't know. We got to make up a machine with that guy. <laughs> Sam made me do it here. Uh -oh. <laughs> Look at his outfit. <laughs> He looks like a Coppola. I'm going to do a couple more real quick. Yeah. Yeah, that's a tough look. A wrestling Coppola. Yeah, right. Right. Our next category is the Ron Popeil Flavor Steam Fry Award for Best Attempted Buzzword or Catchphrase. Oh, good. We've got four on the oh, big yeah. board and one honorable mention. Our nominees are Swift Lift. With my Swift Lift program. Already got one win, the Swift Lift Plan. John's 21 Day Swift Lift Plan. I loved the first time I heard sagging to bragging. Yeah. Sagging to bragging. That made me smile real big. Yeah. She went from sagging to bragging to unbelievable. The refrain to the crowd, unbelievable. So you go from beginner to unbelievable. So literally, you can go from a beginner to unbelievable in 21 days or less. And our final nominee is 
Pro Vantage. Let me show you Pro Vantage. And Pro stands for Progressive Range Option. Okay. Sure. And honorable mention was Specificity. The experts call it Specificity. Because he had a hard time saying it. Some experts call it Specificity. And he said it three times. I didn't want salmon! And I believe he was using it incorrectly based on my internet research. <laughs> because... He was saying that specificity Give me for wanting a little specificity. was about target isolation. Target isolation. My studies indicate that the principle of specificity in athletic training states that sports training should be relevant and appropriate to the sport for which the individual is training in order to produce the desired effect. Specificity? I don't think he was using it as a principle as much as, you know, Oxford Dictionary regular word. Or one of the girls on set was like, it'd be so hot if you said specificity. And he's like, I got you. <clears throat> specificity. Specificity. Like, oh, cool, man. Nice. Can you just move back a little bit? <laughs> Quick sidebar on hosts that struggle with words. Tony Little himself, you know, he sold that pillow forever. Still sells it. You know what I'm talking about with the little beads yeah. in it and stuff where he yeah. dropped the weight yes. down on the egg and everything? Yeah. He can't say pillow to save his life. And I'm not a pillow expert. What? Is he a pillow guy or what? Because he'll even say it. He says it and he goes, oh, this, this pillow is great. I can't even say it wrong the way he says it. And he goes, <laughs> if we sold whatever million dollars and I can't even say pillow. <laughs> he's, he's, like, he, he's the most humble guy, man. He's so cool. Anyway, 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 I messed That's up it. your whole award ceremony <laughs> no. with that sidebar. Oh, man. Yeah. Well, Christmas is canceled now. Thanks a lot, Tom. <laughs> well, to put a year off like the Olympics, it'll be over. Yeah. yeah, that's it. But yeah, guys, if you can convince me to move away from Bun Believable, sure. sure. Congratulations. All right. I'm going to go. Yeah. So when you talk about that production assistant who's out there being like, okay, guys, when John says, Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Everyone. Let's get a nice big deep unbelievable. Come on, guys. Bun and Thigh Doer is an incredible machine. Unbelievable. And everyone's being like, this is my moment. I'm going to be so <laughs> famous from yelling Bun Believable. This is incredible. And you know what? Their dreams came true. You should have just called this thing Bun Believable. Yes. That'd be great. And then we're we're already there. Because you can't help but smile when you say Bun Believable, too. So like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, it's good, but sagging to bragging. She went from sagging to bragging. And I think the thing that puts it over the top is some executive, some whoever wrote this script. It's hard to believe that whole bit was not rehearsed. Fed this to one of these poor testimonial folks and said, hey, can you do one more thing? Can you say sagging to bragging? Go from sagging to bragging. And now right. it's forever on the, whoever said it. And I think it's just a hilarious concept. That person didn't get into college because of that one clip. I'm currently the reigning new Miss Latina International. Wow, fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would say, Mark, yeah. Swift Lift is funny. John's Swift Lift program. Unbelievable is great. Unbelievable. But... Unbelievable is something that should be in a good infomercial. The experts call it specificity. You know, like our man Joe should say fun believable. And you got like the one two punch. Well, and we'd get a kick out yeah. of it. Yeah. Yes. Too good for this. It doesn't belong here. That belongs in a junkyard or maybe someone's fireplace. That's why I love it so much. Because it stimulates <laughs> in you God. maybe watching something interesting. God. But <laughs> Pro Vantage, is, that one's pretty good too. Pro stands for progressive range option. But it's a fantastic muscle. It has to be <laughs> sagging to bragging. She went from a sagging bottom. And I imagine a different origin of sagging to bragging than Mark does, mm -hmm. which I imagine someone else came up with unbelievable unbelievable and john came up with sagging to bragging where he's like he's making edits on the script right and he's like oh you know what would be great if we, what about what's in a how about a sagging to bragging <laughs> that in like you know i can just picture him <laughs> went from sagging to bragging to unbelievable getting a kick out of it for some reason i was like yeah i guess that's a really horrible image it also reminds me he referred to the testimonials as the students in my user group. These are students in my user group. Yeah. Mm. Nexium. <laughs> Just damn it. God. I can't get it's, in front of myself. That was Nexium. Am I right or wrong? Yeah. Interestingly, that woman, Jessica, who was the first testimonial, is also the woman who was on set. Jessica here. Who he said is now your instructor on the DVDs. Jessica's also your workout partner, not on the one, but the two workout DVDs. And is now a model somehow. Jessica. Was not a professional model until now. What's your favorite, Tom, or least favorite? That's a really tough one. Really tough. Yeah. I think, yeah. let me start with the biggest mistake was to put from sagging to bragging and unbelievable that close together. He went from sagging to bragging to unbelievable. Almost as if it was like a word apart. 
That's yeah. bad. That's taking two relatively brilliant things, depending on context, and just too much too soon, man. It's like the inside of the cake is icing also, you know? Oh, <laughs> wow. So, yep. first of all, I'm, I would wager that he came up with all of those himself, because that is his forte. Yeah. He is quick. He is great at puns. He is great at stuff like that. That is, if, if I were to say his success as a motivational speaker, as he touts, would be because he's pretty funny in that way where if you're just if you're a little bit corny you're going to love him you know yeah. so i really really struggle <laughs> i looked away <laughs> but there were some really good points brought up i never in a million years would have thought up myself i never would have come up with from sagging to bragging i just think that's when i when i heard it i'm like shit write that down sagging to bragging <laughs> You know, and then, but then I had this giant, unbelievable is near and dear to my heart. It's just a great word. Unbelievable. You know, yeah. like they've said, it's like, but that's too real. That's just, you know, that's, yeah, that should be the title of a thing. That's actually a good one. But man, yeah. they may be slightly different in their, uh, where they should be used, which is never back to back. But um, mm. I got to give a tie. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Hey, it's a good tie. I'll take it. I'll take a split. Finally, I'm getting on the board. Finally, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's what John would have wanted. That's why I put them so close together to make sure that they were associated properly. Getting in your journal. Oof. So literally, you can go from a beginner to unbelievable in 21 days or less. She went from a sagging bottom. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Sagging to bragging. Those are the experts. And they agree the Bun and Thigh Doer is an incredible machine. Unbelievable. She went from sagging to bragging to unbelievable. You know, the sad thing is I spent so much time talking about such a stupid thing that now I just, <laughs> I know I have zero brain cells left. You're welcome. Right? I mean, that was too deep of an explanation for something that deserved none. Yeah. Welcome, welcome to our to world. Our world. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is what I do to people. That's all I do. <laughs> this is my gift to everybody else. You're going to have to detox after this. We're sorry. I am. Yeah. 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 I am. Meditate or something. Yeah. <laughs> Hell of a run through the rise, Tom. Thank you for making sure that we didn't veer too far off course in terms of who our winners should be. Appreciate it very much, Tim Apple. Before we get out of here... There was one thing that John did that I noticed in subsequent rewatches that I definitely didn't pick up on the first time through was when he has Cindy and Jenny up there on stage out of the crowd. Anybody want to try to butt and thigh door? And Jenny, the former Dallas Cowboys cheerleader, she's facing forward and working on her bun. Working the gluteal muscle. And she hops on and he goes, well, obviously you're familiar with this. It's like, <laughs> you weren't supposed to say that out loud, John, because you're, you're tipping that she's... Anyways, <laughs> and then she's doing the workout and he sheepishly just goes, can I touch? Can I touch? Oh, <laughs> Touches her ass. And uh, it made my fucking skin crawl. Yeah. And now I hope that I've ruined your guys' nights by now thinking about that. You did, man. Yeah. Thank you. That was the last most important thing that I needed to mm -hmm. release. I feel lighter by burdening. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dan, this one was a perfect one for us, obviously, to bring Tom on for an expert because we just didn't go there. It was such a jarring experiment in production that we were looking at that we just couldn't get away from some of these things that just wouldn't fly today let's look at linda here and on the call now history when we see something like this we get thrown off like a hundred percent so i think the, there was yeah. major value of having tom here to keep her heads on straight and then be very uh sarcastic during the tommies <laughs> you think so i don't know i see i don't think tom's a sarcastic guy i don't know if you guys know that <laughs> it's one of my only two languages man <laughs> David, we miss anything from your chair? God, no. <laughs> He's like, I don't want to say anything else. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just, it was a good one. It's a classic. It's unbelievable. This is becoming a classic. This one is a classic, I think. Tom, any parting thoughts, anything else that we I, missed, glanced yeah. over, or feels like it might need just a little bit extra, a little bit of hint of purpose before we go? We were going to be serious. I didn't think it was ridiculous that this professional, was it the Dallas Cowboys? Whatever she was a cheerleader for. And she was talking about that for all the stuff they do, None of oh, it did yeah. any good compared to this thing. And he couldn't get the next sentence out of his mouth before she goes, oh, my God, I feel it now. You know what I'm like going, <laughs> you know, they, those, they get those girls out there and they work them like six hours a freaking day doing routines and stuff. And it's like that couldn't have anything yeah. to do with the way she looks. Right. There's just no way. But yeah. Holy right. smoke. Yeah. You're basically a professional gymnast. And I'm not sure yeah. this is really a classic, depending on how you choose to define classic. It's more like 
You ever see Mystery Science Theater 3000 or whatever that was? Oh, yeah. Might be a small inspiration. It's more like one of those from the <laughs> archives, you know, still on celluloid that you pull up and nobody really wants to see. So they're forcing someone to watch it type of thing. That's what yeah. it feels like <laughs> to me. It yeah. sounds a lot like our last episode. <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> but man, Tom, thank you so much. One, for tipping us off on the existence of this thing. And two, and more importantly, for joining us and keeping us on track giving us some actual context for what some of this stuff is and really breaking out of your shell and trying out some jokes and some sarcasm where hopefully, you know, that felt a little bit natural. Maybe you can incorporate that into your, in your day job, you know, if it feels right, don't force it. I'm a janitor. I can, I'm alone all the time. I can do whatever I want. So. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. Thank you again, Tom. Yep. It's good to see you guys. Thanks for the opportunity. Mark, Dave, thank you guys as well. See you guys. Thanks guys. Thanks Tom. Bye everybody. Have fun to your apartments. Bye. <laughs> see ya. Dave, see ya. Thank you all for tuning in. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, or follow on your preferred podcast medium. And for all things Call Now, visit callnowpodcast.com. And if you want to connect with the boys, you can find them at Call Now Podcast on Twitter and Instagram, or send them an email at callnowpodcast at gmail.com. And if you can't fight the urge to pick up the phone and call now, you can leave them a voice message at 617-356-7439. If you call in the next 30 minutes, you might just be the next star of Call Now. Thanks again for listening. We hope you tune in next time to Call Now. Thank you for listening. This has been a B-plus effort. We'll try harder next time.